The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. Hello, my name is Bruce Doran. I'm one of the staff scientists that works here on the third floor, and I'm in front of one of our frog habitats. And the reason being is that visitors regularly ask us questions about frogs, and one particular question they ask is whether or not it's a good idea to hold frogs. And in order to answer that question, we need to better understand the biology of frogs. So this video will explain a bit about the biology and ecology of frogs, so Frog Biology 101. So I'm holding in my hands a bullfrog, and bullfrogs, like all other frogs, they have very similar features. Uh, one of the features that all frogs have in common is this very large mouth, and they have a sticky tongue within it, which obviously they use to capture prey. Uh, in the case of a bullfrog, they can actually eat animals almost the same size as their mouth, so sometimes they'll eat to eat actually eat other frogs, so you have to be careful with uh, bullfrogs. Uh, the other feature also they have are the bulging eyes, obviously to see their prey. And in fact, frogs will only see things that move. So the insect or the little prey item needs to move for them to see. Also having eyes on the top of their head allows them to see above water while the rest of the body is underneath water. Uh, another feature that they all have in common are these long legs, which are used for jumping, for swimming, for getting around, and they're quite powerful. And I'm actually holding them by the legs. It's the best thing, uh, best way to hold them without actually hurting them. Now, I keep calling him him. And the reason for that is in the case of bullfrogs, you can actually tell the difference between a male and a female bullfrog by looking at this structure right behind the eye and this is actually called a tympanum, or an eardrum. In the case of a bullfrog, if the tympanum is bigger than the eye, it is a male. If the tympanum is similar size of the eye or smaller than the eye, then it is a female. So you can actually tell with bullfrogs and another type of frog, green frogs, whether they are male or female, by looking at the size of the tympanum. In the case of other frogs, you can't really really see by looking to panda. The only other way is to kind of put your fingers underneath their armpits and if the frog kind of screams or growls or gives you a, no a noise, then that's a male. If it doesn't do any sound, then that's a female. So as you can tell, frogs are quite neat and they're built really well to be able to live in wetland habitats and aquatic habitats. So the question that people keep asking me is whether or not it's a good idea to be holding frogs in their hands. And as you can tell, I'm actually wearing gloves. And it's actually not a very good idea because frog skin is very, very sensitive. Uh, frogs can breathe with their lungs, so they have little nostrils on the top of their, uh, their snout in order to breathe in air with their lungs. But also, frogs can breathe through their skin. And in order to breathe through their skin, they use this slimy layer that's actually on the top of their skin. Now, if you take your hands and you hold a frog, you can actually remove that slimy layer and make it very difficult for the frog to be able to breathe underwater. Another reason why it's not a really good idea to hold frogs is because when people see a frog out in the wild, in a pond or whatever, a lot of times people are wearing either sunscreen or bug repellent, which is actually extremely toxic to frogs. So, unless your hands are very, very clean, you shouldn't be holding frogs, especially if you have a sunscreen or bug repellent. Also, the third thing is that many people know how to hold frogs properly. Uh, I'm holding this bullfrog with its legs and supporting it with its front legs. So I'm not actually squishing its body and it's fine that way. A lot of times people don't know how to hold frogs and they can actually hurt it. So generally I tell people it's not a good idea to hold frogs unless they know what they're doing and they know how to hold them without hurting them and also unless they have very, very clean hands. So that's why at Science North, we don't allow people to touch frogs because it's just too easy for them to get sick from being touched by people's hands. So this is a replica skeleton of a bullfrog. So as you can tell, bullfrogs just like us, they have a backbone. 
But what makes them a little bit different is that they have unique features you don't necessarily see in certain other animals. So they have these very long back legs to which muscles are attached, to which they use for swimming and for jumping. They have these very long back toes, which again they use for moving around, but these are webbed. So they'll use their back legs uh, in order to swim. But one that thing that's really neat about amphibians, especially frogs, is the size of their skull. They actually have very, very big heads. These two holes right here are actually for the eyes. And when we look in front, right over here, you can see the mouth is actually very, very big. So they need very large mouth in order to capture prey and to swallow it into their uh, stomach. So bullfrogs, just like any other frogs, their skeleton and their bodies are well adapted to living in the environments, usually aquatic environments. So I hope you learned a little bit about the biology and ecology of frogs and whether or not it is a good idea to hold frogs. So if you want to see some of our frogs here at Science North and learn a little bit more about them, you're more than welcome to join us here on the third floor. <laughs>